Sean Stuckey and I'm a screen printer by trade, but I'm involved into creating mixed media pieces with screen printing. I became an artist on accident. I wanted to be a graphic designer and actually that's what I studied as graphic design and I was influenced by a lot of the postmodern graphic design um, pieces I would see in books online. There was a lot of things that I really enjoyed and I, I could never replicate my own style of that kind of graphic design. And one day I was just at work and talking to a friend of mine, a co-worker, and he I was telling him, like, I wish I could design like this. I wish I could create some really beautiful graphic design pieces. And he said, well, you can if you, if you want to. You can, if you just put your mind to it, I bet you can. And it's like, oh, whatever. You know, I, this nice idea has confidence in me. I didn't have confidence in myself. But that night, I went home and I actually just started just messing around on, in Photoshop, scanning images in, finding things online. And I created my first piece, which was um, eventually became my little, the Lala Blues banner that I have here. So, that way, so I, I just started making these pieces in Photoshop and I had about six pieces um, created and I wanted to somehow reproduce these in a way that I could give these the way to people because my friends saw my digital files and I, oh these are fantastic, but you should, um, you know, I would like to have this as a copy, but I think these are just digital files, I don't know how to print them. And one day, <clears throat> walking home from the Division Blue Line stop, I passed um, uh, Steve Walters Print studio, Screwball Press, and there was a flyer in the front door that says, "Crash Course in Screen Printing." You know, uh, we can, you know, one day or two days. You know, and after the prize is like two, three hundred dollars, and I decided I'll try screen printing my work because I heard about this meeting, don't know anything about it, so I signed up for a class, took a course. Uh, it was a one-day thing, and I knew after I made my first piece at his studio, this is something I should get involved with and reproduce all my work in this style. And that's how it began. My, my newer works, that I have a distinct process in how I create them because it's not just straight screen print anymore like my original few series that I created years ago. I involve a lot more mm, hands-on approach. I do a lot of hand painting. I will also what I call give, me, uh, give my works a bath. Um, when I'm creating the background of my image, it's a, a long process because you have to wait for the ink to dry, of course, or the paint to dry, and continue um, building up from that. So I, I will actually take my, the wood itself and it just happens to fit perfectly in my bathtub, like wedged in there, and then I put ink on top, I give it a bath, I sandpaper it, and just use an additive and subtractive process to create the desired background. And once I have the background to my liking, I will then begin to add printmaking, uh, screen printing on top of it. So I'll print maybe a color or a hand painted color and screen print on top of that and just gradually build upon that until I have the piece, I guess, final. The new works I'm working on now are my new style of printing where I, it's hardly no print at all. It's all hand painting, and I get really involved in with creating more than this, you know, several colors. I'm creating a whole palette on my piece now, not just before I would just work with, let's say, five, six colors maximum. Now I'm unlimited. I'm, I'm going all out and I'm spending all my time building up the piece to um, have as many colors as I think it needs. I found out I was really colorblind probably when I was in a senior in high school, but I, I didn't. I denied it. I was like, no, I'm not red, green, colorblind. I can see red, but I guess the subtleties of red, green, colorblindness are not as black and white as you would think. I, I just can't see certain chromas and values of red and green. They just appear brown or gray to me. And after I went to college, I started to study and take art classes and stuff. And that's when I really started to struggle with color theory because I couldn't make brown or I couldn't mix this color and I was frustrated because all the colors I'd mix would come out the same and I just didn't know what was doing wrong. And over time, I 
as I was studying graphic design in college, I learned to rely on value more to get to help create my composition and to not let color be the main factor. The first series I created was purely subconscious. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I was creating these visual beauties and and I didn't know why it was. Later on I was able to look back and reflect like when I made this piece and analyze what was going on in my life and I can relate that piece to some situation or some feelings that I was having at that moment. And it's, it's, it's like a visual diary, like my first pieces, because I had no idea what I was doing, I was just doing them. And then eventually I became more of aware of where my inspiration, my influences come from, and they were hidden uh, uh, in my dreams. Because some, I have, I mean, I, I, would, I think a lot of people dream, but I think I have intense dreams where I remember a lot of detail. And I would get up after having one of these dreams and start writing things down. Elements, whatever I can remember, because the imagery is just, it, 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 slowly, it fades away very quickly when you wake up. So I, then I started realizing that my dreams were a huge factor in um, my inspirations. And then I discovered um, another place where in, uh, my inspiration comes from, and that's that state of mind where you're not awake and you're not sleeping. I don't know, it's like lucidness. You're in between dreams and in between reality, um, it's like some extra dimension. It's weird, and, and I could see visual things in my eyelids. Like when you close your eyes, you, you don't really see things, but sometimes I do, and it's really weird. It's actually I call them silent film. Those things I, I think were very childhoodish in nature. It seemed like there was a foundation of this innocence, and that was the inspiration for several of my pieces. Um, that watch, I, and then I've called that blue series. I have another name for them, um, but they're like all blue and all silhouetted uh, images on top of it. So I have this peaceful existence of where my inspirations come from, from these lucid dreams. And then I have these other nightmarish pieces that have, or night terrors, these intense dreams of, they're just uncomfortable. And that's where these come from over here. Those pieces are all from they're the disturbing nightmares, and um, I don't like those dreams, but they were so disturbingly beautiful that I had to try to recreate those figures I saw in my dreams. And it's hard to capture a whole dream in the span of one still image, but those are my attempts at it. It means so much to me to hear that people are influenced by my work in, in a positive way. Or in a negative way, I guess, that's, that's still influencing people, but for someone to find an attachment to one of my pieces and, and take that and reinterpret it for their own self is absolutely beautiful. I moved here from a really small town in Kansas nine years ago and Chicago obviously had a huge effect on my thought process and how I engaged in my daily activities in my life. Chicago has contributed to my growth and my career as an artist by there's plenty of opportunities out there if you seek them. Um, I originally started printing or showing my work at Around Coyote back when that was around several years ago. And that was my foot in the door, if you want to say it, that, excuse that expression. That's my way in getting involved with the art community. Even though it's just an emerging art community, which is was fine, because that's what I was. Um, but from there, I was able to work with other galleries on projects with theater companies. And eventually now I'm working with the CAC and uh, this organization and the people within to expand my knowledge base and my opportunities. I think Chicago has enough support. I mean, of course, I mean, be, I would like to see more grants. I've applied for a few Chicago grants and they're really, I mean, I haven't done a whole lot. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a database that I don't know about, but I, I think financially it would be helpful because Obviously, I could create more work if I had more money to do it. And like, because I have to do everything in my apartment, I have to plan things out to make it happen. And it takes me months to make one piece because I financially don't have the means to do that. My decision to become a CAC member was me trying to find other opportunities. I'm not always constantly looking for ways to get my work out there for people to see. But I felt from what I've heard about them that I would want to, to participate in this organization. 
Well, I don't know what I hope to accomplish next five years. It's probably a very difficult question to answer because nobody knows what. You, I mean, I set goals all the time, but I mean, th life's unpredictable, and I can't foresee what I'm going to be doing in five years. What I'd like to be doing in five years is is going to be totally different. What's actually going to happen? But ideally, I would still want to be creating my work in my apartment, <laughs> um, occasionally showing my work. That's the best part for me, is showing my work, not selling my work. I love to show my work to people and be in. I like how people are inspired by my work, and I'll get emails occasionally from people who see my work online or wherever they see them, and they'll be really nice emails saying, hey, you inspired me to get back into making art, or you inspired me this way and that way, and or I want to buy this from you. So, but my, for me, the most rewarding thing ever is having people who connect with my work and are able to relate to it in a, in a way.